What's up guys, I'm Brandon. I'm Kelly. And today we're gonna find out whether or not torque dampers actually work. Check it out. What is going on guys? Love to Extreme Jelly Drivers. Thanks so much for stopping by the garage. Today, Kelly and I are gonna be working on the old Miata. <laughs> so if you guys are wondering what's been going on with this thing, we have been basically driving it, right? Yeah, we've been enjoying it. Yeah. All, the, all the year and a half of our labor. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We got it running, as you guys know. We're driving it. Uh, it did have a brake leak, which <laughs> Kelly and I tended to. Uh, we had to replace the master yeah. cylinder as well as the brake booster. Mm -hmm. um, didn't film any of that, but, you know, it's on there. It's looking pretty. It's working. Car stops. Mm -hmm. But today, we are going to be kind of addressing something that isn't really like broken with the car or anything like that, but it's kind of like a, an, an annoyance, an annoyance yeah. yeah, that we're kind of dealing with. And that is, is that when we initially started the car, we're gonna show you in two seconds, the car, the, the engine moves around a lot, the header knocks against the transmission tunnel, and just under like hard, hard acceleration, and it seems to move around a lot. So we are gonna be installing an engine torque dampener. Uh, we reached out to China, <laughs> and for $22, we picked this generic uh, piece of crap up, and um, took like six weeks to get. Shipping was like 30 bucks. But it's here in all its glory. Um, I'll put a link down in the description if you guys wanna pick one of these up. But we're gonna find out today whether or not these things actually work. So as you can see, the engine moves around a ton and it's it's really annoying when you're at a stop sign, you're trying to feather the gas, the engine's rocking back and forth, the header's knocking into the transmission tunnel. <laughs> so um, it's, there's nothing wrong with our mounts. We have brand new Mazda mounts. Everything is new on the car, so it's nothing's worn out. And after doing a lot of research, the Mazda speed mounts are not the answer. All they're gonna do is kind of continue vibration in throughout the car, and that's not what we want. So we wanna just stop the engine from moving side to side, and that's what this torque damper is supposed to do. So Kelly and I were messing around with this thing before we started filming, and <laughs> We've already run into all sorts of problems. There's always a problem. Come on, China, you can do better than this. So installation should be I mean, super easy. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. That piece lies there. And then Kelly's gonna help me. I'll, I'll hold that. hold that one? So this one goes here. Yep, that goes there. The bolts can only go one way, okay? okay. And then the dampener, this, yeah. damper, we'll go. I got this, yeah, I got it. The damper goes in between the two, okay? Um, the problem is, is that Right here, we're going to have contact. We're going to have to put a spacer in uh, in order for this to work. So this is the hardware that comes with the kit. You got a bolt and nut, and they're, they're pretty nice. Then you have another bolt and nut, and it's weird because this bolt is a little bit different. And then you have this third guy. I don't know why you have this. I don't know what the heck that thing does. Comment below if you know what this bolt does. But uh, here's the spacer. I dug around the garage, found this little piece of aluminum. We're going to cut this to size, and uh, we might have to actually put in... Longer bolts, I don't know, we'll see what happens, but no directions whatsoever, you gotta kinda figure this out. And we're doing a video on this because there's like zero information on YouTube, on Miata.net or any of this about installing one of these. So hopefully today we can shed some light on how well it works and how to install it. <laughs> this is going just about uh, as well as everyone who's watching this expected. <laughs> so, all right, so this bracket went in, no problem, really. I mean, it, it fits, the lines, the holes lined up. We just have a finger tight right now. But this guy here, this guy here is off by a country mile. So not only does do the holes not line up, I mean, it's, it's actually not too terrible, but the bottom of the plate is, is hitting the header. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do some modifications here to make this work. Uh, which is annoying, but you know, this is what happens when you get cheap stuff and try to make it functional. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna make this work. So give us a second. All right, so step number one is to trim this bracket, and I went ahead and made a line. I'm gonna be cutting a significant amount off of there. The line's not totally straight, but don't worry, I'm not gonna uh, go bananas. I'm just gonna take a sliver off, and then we'll reinstall it and see how it fits. Good. 
So we got that shaved off. Let's see what kind of improvement we made. Before, this wouldn't even lay flat. Well, it lays flat now. <laughs> All nice. right, so now, let's see how much, of, how much bigger does that hole need to be? Oh my God, significant. Significant. I can't get under there. This is yeah. All right, we got some work to do. <laughs> Don't ever buy anything from China, man. It is just awful. Just look at this job I did here. Look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. It's been like an hour of me messing around with this significant piece of metal. Look how strong this is, dude. It's like the strongest part of the car. All right, so I got the bracket hand tight. I got this thing basically extended as far as it'll go safely. Um, not that this is some seriously complicated shock, believe me, it's not. I took it apart and it's like a piece of rubber and a piece of plastic. So I don't even know what this thing's actually gonna be doing. It's gonna be very interesting once we get this thing going here, what it does. We talked about making a spacer, haven't done that yet, but that's gonna slide on like that. And then if we were to have stayed with their stock hole, which was this one up here, we have to deal with this. We would need a longer bolt. All that's a bad idea. So I went ahead and whoops, I went ahead and re-drill the hole here. And hopefully this is gonna, there we go. Well, that goes in there. So now the spacer won't have to be as long. I'm gonna make it just about that big. I guess you could do it with washers too. Just so it clears this and it's in there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off now just because it's just ugly. So I'll cut that off right around there and then that'll be our final bracket. You told me this was gonna take 20 minutes. Yeah, I know, I did. I told Kelly it would take 20 minutes. It's, at least, it's been at least two hours, <laughs> at least two hours. Maybe even more than that. All right, we think we got it. We think we got it. <laughs> Kelly is over this install. <laughs> and so am I. I will tell you though, I got a little excited at the end there when we come down the home stretch. I was like, dude, I can't wait to see if this thing does anything. So check it out in all its glory. Uh, this is our rigged up job, our cut down bracket. That thing's solid as a rock. We did use the hardware that came with the shock uh, for this section here. We have this adjusted out. Uh, I wouldn't want to adjust this any longer than it already is. It's pretty, pretty long. So I, I, I wouldn't want to make it any longer. And this thing is, is tight. Like you could twist it and like you create some sort of tension on it. I don't even know how this thing works. I took it all apart and I still don't know how it works, <laughs> but it's, it's in there pretty good. And then over here, our spacer's a little long. It's a little long, but it does clear the master cleanly. Um, I would have liked to have this on a little tighter, but it's really hard to make a spacer smaller than, you know, than this with a uh, pipe cutter. So now's the moment of truth. We're gonna get in, we're gonna turn this on, and let's see if we have a result. Kelly will fill in the engine bay, and let's see if it's shaking as much as it was. Oh boy. Actually works. <laughs> All right, so we're in the car and it makes a difference. It really does. It, it really does. does. It uh, everything feels more connected, and I am not banging the header off the transmission tunnel. If you guys have a Raceland header, then you know they have clearance problems, and this helps. So I'm at a stop now. I'm gonna feather it, and we didn't hit. We didn't hit at all. No. So that's a result, man. <laughs> that's a result. That's pretty good. Uh, the reason I didn't buy the whole thing off of eBay is because 
you have to you need the bracketry that we had to heavily modify in order to fit our car so but if you just need the shock you can get that off of ebay so yeah yeah I'm pretty really good impressed. result it's pretty impressive I'm impressed. uh not a lot of people have this thing so i want to try it out and i say yeah they work <laughs> So the next time you guys are on the internet and you see something for $22. <laughs> Don't buy it. It's not worth Just it. make sure you got a really good set of tools because <laughs> holy cow. That was like a three hour install. It's like four bolts and it took like three hours with all the mocking up and cutting and not sure if, not sure if we should extend it here or extend it there. And so does it, does it act like a shock when the engine's going? It kind of just acts like a big brace. It's a big brace. I mean, th that's after taking it apart. I thought it was gonna have like internals and a spring, and like everything a normal shock does. It doesn't have any of that. No, it's got like a you really just might hard. Might as well put like a bar in here. You're, you know, a bar of steel. A hundred percent. If any of you guys have any experience with one of these things in the past on any vehicle, because they make them for Hondas, uh, this allegedly is for is for a Miata. Um, let me know down in the comments whether or not the thing works or if it acts like a shock or what exactly it does but we got some sort of result here so we're going to run what we've run it's definitely made a difference and we don't have our racing land header hitting our transmission tunnel anymore. no 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 we don't so that's awesome anyway guys that's gonna do it for this <laughs> one i hope you enjoyed a video of us going crazy in the garage but uh the miata's coming along every little step um, Exciting. We're, we're making some improvements on what at least we think we're making improvements. I, yeah, I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> Next week's going to actually be another video and we're going to try another improvement. Uh, I can promise you it won't be from China. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're trying to just get this thing dialed in. Uh, as far as paint goes, we're on the list and hopefully it'll get in the paint booth soon. But anyway, guys, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.